Some of the worst advice you can give someone who is shy is, girl, just go talk to these people. They're not going to hurt you. They're not going to bite or it's not a big deal. Just get out of your shell, make eye contact, all of this, blah, 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 blah. It doesn't work, right? Because nine out of 10 times you're like, girl, if it was as easy as you're saying, I wouldn't be in this predicament to where now you clicked on this video trying to figure out how to overcome being shy, right? <laughs> in this video, I'm going to give you the seven ways that I got rid of being shy that has helped me. And obviously I wouldn't be here doing this video to thousands of people that's going to be watching. I, I overcame that shyness, but it still comes on a lot of times when I tell people I'm shy, girl, you got a YouTube channel. That don't mean nothing, okay? <laughs> because being in front of people physically is completely different than being in front of a camera. You know, even though the anxiety of knowing people are going to watch, I'm going to give you these seven ways that help me. That's not the typical regular, you know, things that you'd hear that really did help me. Like I am a testament to these things myself and I know it's different for everybody, but I hope these things help you also. But first, hey friend, welcome to my channel, Korean Elude Mental Gems. This channel is dedicated to leveling up in all areas of your life. So let us learn together, read together, but most importantly, grow together. Now, without further ado, let's get into this video. Let's start with this bonus, which I'm giving in the beginning, <laughs> not even fast. I know typically people leave it in the end, but I'm putting it in the beginning for you guys. Being shy can be used to your advantage you can use it to cultivate a mysterious aura if done right people will be left thinking you are so interesting instead of just standoffish and unapproachable right there's two ways to be shy i'll say this there's a the shy person that's just very demure meek you know smiling at everybody polite hi <laughs> dainty cute you know shy and then there's the people that are shy but they have this tough exterior and they're really sweet wonderful people but they cannot get over that RBF, you know, that resting bee face. <laughs> And they're kind of more standoffish in the corner, not looking. Someone says hi to them. They're kind of, and they're just to themselves, glued to their phone, not really interacting much, right? That's two ways to be shy. It's not that the person is necessarily just standoffish and mean in general. They're really sweet people, but they just don't know how to use being shy to their advantage. So it can come off as standoffish. Now, the best way to be shy, I know this sounds crazy. If it's just really difficult while you're on your journey to overcome being shy, or even, I don't think you ever really overcome being shy. If you were shy, you're still always going to be a little shy, but you learn ways to kind of deal with it the best way is to always smile smiling is free okay smiling is free even if you're quiet people will not automatically just assume you're stuck up if they see a smile on your face okay this person is just quiet shy timid to themselves because they're so pleasant that's how we describe people right think of a shy but pleasant person that you know the way you describe them when people say what's wrong with her oh she's just shy she's just you know she's a very quiet timid girl like you describe people like that but then think of someone that probably has the same thing they're very quiet but they just You know, you're more like, like, I don't know what's her problem. You're not gonna defend that person, right? This is what I mean by that. Like it, it all depends on how you do it and the way you do it to just have that mysterious, charming aura is just to be pleasant, to kind of work on your gazing. And even the Princess Diana, what made people so attracted to Princess Diana is that she had that, you know, down gaze that. <laughs> A lot of women use that to their advantage to pretend to be shy, to be timid, but it comes off a little bit more flirty, a little bit more, you know, even when we see a guy that's handsome or good looking, that's kind of like, you know, they make it seem like it's almost like <laughs> hard for them to make eye contact with you, but they stay with that smile, that coy smile. It makes you want to shelter them, protect them, talk to them and understand them. So it can do that to you to play with eye contact, keeping your head down. Like when you see animals, a ferocious animal they always tell you the way to submit is to keep your head down and avoid eye contact right and you seem as harmless and not a threat etc a lot of people who are shy but have that standoffish like vibe is they try to take the tip of make eye contact with the person they try to take that tip but they do it so awkwardly that you end up just staring into the person's soul as they're talking some of them don't even blink and you're like whoa <laughs> they feel a little threatened you're like <laughs> So you kind of look at it as in the animal kingdom, right? The more disarming you can be is by also having that submissive spirit. And it doesn't mean you're weak. Even if you're a man, it doesn't mean you're less masculine when you're talking to a woman. 
a lot of women find it very attractive trust me i know when you're talking to a guy and he's just kind of like timid it makes you feel like dang am i doing that to you i'm making you blush i'm right there you know automatically you're like now interested in talking to the person getting to know more versus them just like piercing into your soul all the time you feeling exposed you're like dang i'm a little intimidated it's always better that con um pickup artists teach men to be the more disarming you are the more you get away with with the woman right so now let's jump into the tips let's start with number one start small start by simple greetings at coffee shops etc or small rehearsed compliments for colleagues and people you see often but too shy to ever speak to right always have a compliment handy for it but you have a handy compliment ready where you're like girl i like your hair oh i like your nails where'd you get your nails from oh i like that top or something like that and if it's guys guys typically don't do that but maybe they'll look at their shoes or the watch or the guy's car man your car is da 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 or you know they'll find other ways to compliment the men or to you know bond with them always have a compliment ready okay even if it's not a physical appearance type of thing but the more specific you are with your compliments the more of an impression you will make the more specific of a compliment you give to someone the more memorable you are and they're more likely to you know work with you but rehearse these compliments rehearse how you're going to talk to people especially if it's people that you want to make an impression on that you know you're going to meet always have something ready right number two is develop your own interests in frequent places where people are interested in similar things it's easier to talk about what we already are confident about you know what we know about especially if it's a cool fun thing if you're into anime or comic books then go to events where like-minded people are and practice simple greetings art galleries if you're into art you know lots of guys make new friends at the basketball court they go to play alone and guaranteed someone always comes up and requests to hoop with them smile and give simple greetings at the nail salons etc men make friends so easily right because uh, some men right they'll go to the basketball court court i'd witness this they'll just go to play by themselves they just have a ball and then by the end they're leaving cracking up as if they knew these guys for years laughing somebody bound to come up oh let me hoop with you whatever and then they make small talk they probably never know each other's name for months <laughs> but they play consistently together we all know that right simple as that where you go all the man did was go somewhere where he loves basketball he's passionate about it wants to play he went to a court and found like-minded people and then boom you bond it says simple as that going to places where you have common interests with everyone there if you're into music or specifically opera you better find an opera show and go to the theater if you're into jazz music there's so many jazz clubs in your local area that you probably don't even know about go there you're gonna find people that when you talk to them like if you've ever spoken to a musician i'm surrounded by musicians all my life right the very music you're listening to is produced by my brother right here in my background music all of my background music but if you're so if you're surrounded by musicians one thing they love to talk about they love to talk about music in any capacity they never get tired of it they will never get tired of it <laughs> trust me i know so you kind of you bring up that topic they're going to come alive if you like to cooking you go to a cooking class airbnb even has like um, little activities you can book local activities you can do sip and paint and meet like-minded people you can do um culinary class a quick cooking class you'll make friends there take a class and practice talking to people there the more friends you have the more outgoing you will become but if you shelter yourself you don't go out you don't do anything and don't have friends you're going to be more timid i find the more my repertoire of friends grew the it was more difficult to be shy it was more difficult because now i'm so used to talking to people making friends or whatever that having friends that it just makes it easier so make your friends by taking certain classes based on whatever you're interested in it's always going to be easier number three is rehearse conversations prior to meeting up with new people or going to a party and have some questions ready play the conversations in your head and have responses ready if you know where you're going say there's an event that's been giving you anxiety you're really shy like maybe public speaking you rehearse what you're about to say before you go do a public speaking right so the same thing with event it makes you more relaxed not saying you're going to come off as the most confident etc but it relaxes you a little bit more to know what questions you're already already going to ask i would rehearse questions when i was in corporate and i would have clients my first time dealing with clients my shyness was so chronic that it was holding me back even with getting new clients and growing like i should which is why i was like uh -uh, i need to work on this i would hate picking up phone calls i would hate having to go out there and even pitch to people like it was terrible but i learned that having sticky notes practicing rehearsing what i'm gonna say when they're coming in having a script i had a script for everything 
phone calls, everything. I had scripts just lying around, right? Even when I do videos for you guys on my notepads on my phone, I always have script ready. I read off of, it helps me to already be confident in knowing what I'm saying and questions. So don't be afraid to use that and rehearse what you're about to say. It's going to, your brain is not going to fart versus where you don't know what to say. Like, uh, um, you're stammering a lot. You're looking, you're kicking your toes. No, no, no. Be prepared. Number four is be honest to say, I'm pretty shy. Most people will start to lead the conversation for you. Once you express that you're shy or timid, they usually do everything to make you comfortable and appreciate your effort. When I used to be shy, I used to just tell people straight up, yo, I'm really shy. Like I'm, <laughs> you know, especially if it's a first date or, you know, it's a new friend you're kind of talking. Maybe you're at this party, you're trying something different. You're at this class or this party. You just kind of answer like, straight up, listen, I'm a little shy, I'm a little timid. So people are more likely to work with you versus they just don't know why you're quiet in the corner and you're not working. People will be more receptive with you. Many times I used to make that mistake, like I'll go meet my friends' families and their families would think something's wrong with me or I'm stuck up or I'm weird because I'm in a corner versus I could have just told them, yo, I'm shy, I'm not really, you know, whatever. And once they find that out about me, they're more respective, res receptive towards you. So sometimes a little bit of honesty and just letting it be known that I'm not the most outgoing, I'm not the most, you know, whatever, will do the difference. Number five is make eye contact, of course, and keep a smile on your face. Oftentimes when we are shy, we avoid looking at people and keep a straight stoic face without knowing. It makes you unapproachable and you end up validating that you will never make new friends, but it's just your face sometimes. And I know we hear this a lot, but with eye contact, I don't mean to, you know, but a quick split two second eye contact every within every interval, right? I'll start off looking at their eyebrows, then I move to their eyes, then I move to their nose, then I move to their lips, then I go back to eyebrows, eyes, nose, lips, right? When you do that, it looks like it gives the illusion that you're still looking at them in the eye without necessarily looking at them in the eye. You're not discomforted and they're not discomforted, right? It's a way to keep eye contact without gazing into their pupils. And they kind of notice that you're talking. Some people get flattered and be like, I must be very pretty or attractive to this person because they're studying my face, especially if they're confident. If they're a little less confident, it might be like, dang, some in my teeth, some in my eye. But when you keep it moving around the face, it just looks like you're studying the face and have a smile and a pleasant disposition as you're doing it don't do it weirdly because if you have a sort of pleasant disposition then they're a little disarmed to be like okay there's nothing in my teeth they might just find my face pleasant and that person would be a little bit more warm and open to you right number six speak to a therapist if even all of these tips in the world won't help. It might be an underlying issue like social anxiety and not shyness, maybe trauma, or maybe you have shy people in your family and it's how you were raised, right? So speak to a therapist about that and you might discover some things about yourself. Some people have social anxiety based off of trauma that all of these tips won't really help them until they get to deal with what they were going through. So. Oftentimes, if you find that sis, I done watched every video, I done read every book, it has not worked for me, you might have to see somebody, okay? That's just how it is. There's no shame in that. There's no shame in that. Or maybe your family, you grew up around a very introverted family that was close-knit to themselves, didn't go out much or whatever. You weren't really social as a kid. So it's just your upbringing. Don't beat yourself up for that and don't think something is wrong with you for that, okay? It's not your fault, it's just how it is. You're just gonna have to kind of work a little harder harder to undo that. Not that it's a bad thing to be introverted anyways. It's all about pleasant disposition, okay? Think of Princess Diana, okay? Now, next and last is prayer. God removed my shyness. If not, I would not be speaking in front of a camera right now. Like, ask him to build your confidence and you need to be open to speaking to and helping others for his kingdom, right? And being shy in the corner is not going to do that for you. And again, I know not everybody believes in God, but I'm always going to throw those tips in there because for me, I had to pray about it. I used to do a lot of preaching or public speaking at my church where they used to do these programs where they have a youth preach and stuff like that when we were kids. And I used to have a lot to say, but I was very timid and I had to pray on that. The first time I got on stage, I ran off the stage. I ran off the stage, couldn't get two words out. It was terrifying. And I was so embarrassed by that. I was like, I have to work on this, okay? And I prayed about it a lot and God really helped me to give me the tools to hold my hand through it. And now I'm I'm not scared. I may be a little hesitant to go, like I'm, I'll, I'll fight it. But in the end, when I'm there, once I'm there, 
it's on go time. So don't neglect the power of prayer and being in touch with your spiritual guide because that's that's what he's here for. He's here to help you overcome everything that is going to you on with you. And who better to pray than the ruler the man who created you and know you and know you better than you even know yourself, right? But this is all I have for you guys. Comment any more tips you guys have in the comment section. I love you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time. Bye.